Now, normally I would split these up into different sections, but we're going to talk about grouping and masking uh, moved points because they, they can kind of be used interchangeably uh, or together or mix and match. So it's uh, this is a really fun one. So I'm going to go in here just so you can follow along. I'm just going to start with a cube, go in here, drag it out of my canvas, go into edit mode, make it a poly mesh 3D. And we'll just hit uh, Control D a couple times so we can get you know half a million points, let's say. So I'm going to change some points on this object, and there's you know any number of ways to do that. If you've got your standard brush handy, just go ahead and just you know change some points on your mesh here. And you can go over here, and well, first of all, you can go in here to adjust last, you know, and that's a really easy one. And that's literally going to adjust the very last stroke in in your history and then you can go back here and make another change and then again adjust last it'll just adjust that last stroke now on top of that if you have multiple strokes so you make a stroke here and you make a stroke here and you make a stroke here and then you say adjust last well again it's only going to adjust that last stroke however if you're like well i wish i could adjust all the strokes that i'm making on the object at the same time remember you do have history in here so i can go back through my history and i can you know here's where i had nothing changed so control tap this in our history so it's going to store that state and then every stroke you've made after that will be affected by the adjust last so now you're going to adjust all of these at the same time and this is going to be another concept that's going to play through when we use poly groups and group you know group move points and mask move is essentially that's what we're going to get into now but before we do, I'm just going to throw this addendum in here really quickly. I want to I want to make sure that you understand that it's also uh, works with masking. So I just masked, and then I can adjust last that mask. I can over crank it. I can under crank it. Uh, you know, fade it out a little bit. Uh, and of course, when you're masking, if you ever want to go in here and say you know drag rec, throw in a throw in an alpha, drop your focal shift down. You know, and then again, since that was the last stroke, you can go in here and adjust last. And if you want to do multiples, of course, you just got to go back through history. Control tap, go all the way forward and adjust last. And now you're adjusting last on all that masking. As well as, uh, this is probably obvious, but if you go in here to BPA for our paintbrush here, and if we go into subtool, you know, if you turn on that little paintbrush sign, that's going to turn on poly painting. We'll go ahead and choose a red color. So again, we paint with red, uh, we paint with blue, we paint with yellow. And then if we go back, in our history, control tap where we started painting, we can adjust all three of those and it's going to adjust our poly paint. This one doesn't look like it really over cranks the poly paint, but uh, it, it will fade uh, that poly paint opacity out at least. So we have poly groups down here and this is, we have group change points and then underneath masking, we've got mask change points. So all of these kind of use the same system and that you know you can use it can adjust the last one so if i if i want to go ahead and you know go back to this point in history control tap this to unstore that point in history and then i go through here and i, I make a change on my object and again i'm going to adjust last and it's just going to adjust that last thing that i've done or i can go ahead and make a change to my uh, object here i'm going to turn on polyframe let's go ahead and swap out the the, this material for skin shader 4 and we'll go ahead and turn off line so we can see what's going on here so now underneath poly groups i've made a change to my model so here it has nothing i've made one change to my model now if i go over here and say group change points anything that i've moved it's going to go ahead and add a poly group to that now if i continue doing this you're going to see i'm going to you know make a change to this model and say group change points is giving it a new poly group as i do that you're going to notice there's an open and closed circle option so if i turn that on and then i make a change to my mesh and i say group change points and i make a change to my mesh and say group change points with this on open circle it's going to maintain that same poly group with it on closed circle you're going to make a change uh, to your object group change and it's going to be a different poly group every time so you can use that to your advantage another option and we're going to make a polka dot cube here uh, we're going to have group change points and we're going to go ahead and keep it set to uh, closed circle but you can also go in here and you can hold down shift and say group change points so you can make a change hold down shift and group change points and this will also maintain that poly group so whatever is easier for you you know if you, you don't mind going over here and clicking the button you can just hold down shift and maintain the same poly group if you want to assign a hotkey to this button and how you assign hotkeys in zbrush you just hold down control alt click the button and then just say, I'm going to say control alt three is my hotkey for that. In this instance, you know, I'm going to say control alt three. And because, you know, it's a hotkey and it's set to a button and it's closed circle, it's going to give me a new poly group. In that instance, maybe you want to switch this to open circle so that when you hit uh, control alt three, it'll maintain the same poly group every time. So that's why you would turn it on there instead of just holding down shift. Now, just like we talked about, if I go back all the way through my history here, 
to where we had no changes. Control, oops, let's go all the way back. Control here and then go all the way to the front and we say group change points. That's going to group everything that was changed up to that point. It's looking at all the strokes, all the differences in your mesh that have been changed and it's gonna go ahead and group those for you. And again, if you wanna get rid of that point in history, you can just control tap that point in history and then go all the way back forward. Or you can just go back to that point in history, you know, and start, start working again. And again, just to reemphasize this, let's go ahead and change this from a dot stroke over here to a drag rect. We'll throw in alpha 06, focal shift down to negative 100. So now when I punch this in, go ahead and hit okay, uh, it's gonna, you know, kind of give me a hard surface uh, projection. You can go through here and you can tweak your intensity to kind of dial in or hold down alt and, pick out exactly how it's going to work. However, also remember you can go through here and if you want to make these all the same size, let's switch this over to drag dot stroke. So now I can go through here and make these all the same size. However, you can go through here and you say, okay, let's adjust last. Oh, it's only adjusting the last one. I want to adjust all the strokes I've made up to that point. So let's go through here. We'll make a couple more. And now I'm going to go back through my history and say, okay, I want to adjust last on all of these. So go ahead and store that in history and or you can go back to this point in history I'll go ahead and unmark this you can make make all the changes that you want and you can say okay i want to group my last change points or i can go back through here and say you know what here's where nothing was changed control tap go all the way forward say group all those change points since that point in history and like i mentioned before there's now masking so you go to uh, mask change points same exact same deal go through here and you can mask any of these change points you can mask the very last one, or you can go all the way back to the beginning, control tap that, and we can say mask all the change points. Now masking is a little bit different. And now I'm gonna make a really big brush here. So we're gonna modify this geometry and we're gonna say mask change points. And we're gonna, in fact, you know what? Let's go back to this point in history. I'll just get rid of that point in history. So we have all these changes here and then I'm gonna make another massive change, unmask everything. And I'm gonna say, okay, mask change points. So I've made a change, I'm gonna say, mass change points is going to mass my last and you're going to see it kind of has a gradient there um, you're going to notice also we have boost mask and dilute mask so if i want to uh, boost my mask what that's essentially going to do is it's assigning a value to these points up here changed a lot these points down here didn't change as much and so it's kind of giving you a natural fall off which can be useful if you want to like you know control tap and invert this go down here to deformation you know inflate or deflate you know you can make changes to these uh, as much as you want and you'll get a nice natural fall off now you will notice underneath masking here uh, originally we did have you know sharpen mask and blur mask and this is different so again when i have that natural fall off if i go over here to sharpen mask it's going to go through here and it's going to kind of crisp up that edge but it's not going to grab those last few points that actually did change and that's going to be the difference between uh, sharpen and boost is essentially you know boost mask these points changed a lot 100 percent. these points change very little let's say that's one percent if we go through here and hit boost mask it's going to go all the way back to the points that changed very little all those one percent you know changes it's going to it's going to start masking those more heavily and when you go all the way and you just keep hitting boost mass eventually it's going to reach or it's going to cap out essentially to where these points changed very little but you went and boosted them back and it's not going to grow the mask anymore like you can go in here and you can hit grow mask it'll continue to grow those points boost mass is going to stop when it reaches a point where it's like okay nothing else changed on this object and these points that changed very little they've already been fully masked so you're going to notice we have mass change points over here that has a closed and open circle. So similar to, you know, polygroup last changed, you know, this is going to have another option. So instead of having to go through there and choose boost mask, if we go through here and again, we make a change to our object and we say, okay, mass change points is going to mask our last one because we don't have any points in history stored. And then I go over here and instead of clicking boost mask a bunch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say open circle mass change points and it's going to go ahead and do that for me it is going to mask all the points that change even the points that change very little and at this point if you wanted to you can hit Control w and turn that into a polygroup thing or you can go into geometry let's go ahead and say delete lower go in here to edge loop edge loop mask border you know any number of things you want to do to this mask after you've already you know masked it out or you can you know run a deformation or start sculpting on it whatever you want to do so now while you're thinking about, you know, using this, let's go in here to BC brush chisel. 
And if you remember brush chisel functionality, if I go down here to morph target, I can store a morph target. And then as I'm using these brushes, I'm going through here and I'm modifying my mesh. Let's go ahead and drop that stroke and lazy radius down just a little bit here. So I'm going through and I'm making changes and then I can go cut across here. It'll continue to make changes to these. And then now I can, instead of just adjusting last, I can go through here like I'm, you know, I'm cutting in, you know, panel lines. I can hold down shift and cut in like these straight sci-fi panel lines if I want to. So I've got these straight panel lines and I you know, I want to continue to cut across here. So I'm going to say, and you know, another panel line will cut across these. And now instead of adjusting last, you know, I want to adjust all these at the same time. I'm going to go back in history. I'm going to say control tap this point in history, go forward. And now again, I can adjust last. I can make these pop out. I can pop these in. I can go over here to masking and I can say mass change points and mask all of these out at the same time. Or I can go down here to poly groups and I can say group change points and it's gonna group all of these together. So very, very easy to go through and just grab those last change points. We did talk a little bit uh, previously about um, you know, the new bevel brushes. So we go in here to BB, uh, you know, bevel arc or bevel flat. We'll do a bevel flat here. Make a nice big brush. We'll click on one side, click on the other, and we'll just cut straight across. Then we'll go down here and we'll cut straight across. Uh, again, we can go down here and we can say group change points. And again, since we had that stored in history, it's gonna group both of these. If we only wanted to do the very last one, remember, we'll just, you know, untag that point in history. And then now as we're making these changes, it's going to Group that one changed. And remember, since we have open circle now, if I go through here and say group change, it's gonna keep that exact same poly group. However, if I change this to close circle, and then I change these points and I say group change points, this one's gonna be a different poly group. So use that to your advantage. Easy to go through, make changes of these if you want to. You can say you can pop these panels off, or I just wanted to keep this panel separately so I can go up here to you know, sub tool, we can duplicate this off, control shift tap this point, geometry, it's a delete lower, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. You can extract this mesh off underneath your sub tool here. You can do extractions. You can zero mesh this. You can give it dynamic thickness and dynamesh it, any number of things, you know, just to kind of make it easier for you to take pieces or mask pieces and go through and modify it and continue adding to your creation. And remember, if you go back to this original mesh here and we go into solo mode, you still have your history in here. So if I go all the way back to the beginning, control tap that point in history, and then I've got all these change points and I'm like, you know what? Just give me a new poly group of my group change points. There you go. Or if I wanna go back and say, you know what? Let's go back up here to masking, mask change points. And we have the open circle, so it's going to go ahead and do the full boost mask here. That's what you got. Now, if you want to, you can also dilute the mask back. So what that's basically gonna do, so we're forward in history now. I'm gonna go back to our standard brush stroke, and we're gonna say, okay, we've got these points changed. I'm gonna say, well, let's go ahead and store this point in history. I'm gonna change these points here. We're gonna say mask change points, close circle, so we got that gradient. Again, I can boost the mask if I want to, or I can go in here and I can dilute mask. And what that's going to do is dilute the mask down to just the last 100% points that changed a whole bunch. So it's gonna kinda get rid of all the gradient points. Like remember we said, you know, these were 100% change and then these were like 1% change. The loot mask is going to do the opposite of boost. Instead of grabbing all the 1% and changing them to 100%, it's gonna take all the less than 100% and change them to 0%. So now we have just this area mass. And again, you can polygroup this, you can you know extract meshes from this, all sorts of ways you can use those three features uh, kind of mix and matching together uh, to really fine tune exactly what you wanna grab and control. And I mean, we talked a lot about hard surface stuff, but remember, let's hit the comma key. I'm gonna just open up the demo anime head here. Let's go ahead and turn off polyframe. Let's go in here to BC. And instead of doing a brush chisel brush, let's go in here to like chisel creature or chisel 3D. And we'll grab some scales here. You know, so if I want to go through here and we just added some more scales to our mesh, we can go through here and we can say, you know, adjust last. We can even make it inverted scales if we want to, or you know what, that scale's a little too heavy. Uh, or if I was dragging multiple scales on here and it's like, okay, we got, you know, tons of scales and I want to adjust all of them. Remember, uh, this 
point in history, see how it's red? That means it's stored a point in history on another subtool in our scene that we have, uh, or it's just actually, even if it's not a subtool in our scene, since we open a project, that subtool is gone, but it's still stored those points in history. All I need to do, uh, control tap, uh, on this one, that'll go ahead and set the uh, control history to where we're at. And then now I can go through here and say, let's go all the way back in history to where nothing was changed. Control tap that point in history now. And now I can go in here and I can adjust last. I can go through here and I can say, oops, go ahead and put this back on here. So again, I can adjust last from this point in history or and or I can go down here and I can say masking. We can mask all the change points with the gradient. Or I can go in here and say, you know what, let's boost it. Or I can say, you know what, let's mask the change points, but I'm gonna dilute it to just the points that change the most. And in this case, it's only gonna grab the little pinpoints that change the most, because this is a kind of a you know a, a very broad fall-off object. So really only these minute points in here change the most. So it's not gonna be as dramatic as the uh, or as easy to see as the uh, hard surface example there. Or remember, down here under polygroups, let's go ahead and turn on uh, poly polygroups here. Let's change our material out. You can go in here again group change points from this point in history or i can say you know what i just i made this stroke here and i just want to change the polygroups from that point now it's going to look at that point in history and just grab those polygroups so use it with hard surface use it with organic use your history to grab exactly what you want uh, from the beginning of time or maybe just a few strokes back uh, very very easy and highly controllable to get the exact points that you want Oh, and one more thing I should mention. So we do have, let's go ahead and turn our Sculptors Pro off here. And uh, we got our standard brush. We're gonna do a drag rec stroke here. You're gonna see there's a replay last and that's set to the hotkey is one. So adjust last replay last and replay last relative has been pulled out of the stroke menu here and been put in your regular menu. So if I replay last, that's gonna look at my last stroke and just replay that stroke over and over again. So if you don't wanna adjust last, you literally just wanna replay the last values. That's one way to do it. Uh, replay last relative is interesting uh, and if I hover over this one you're going to see that the hotkey for that is shift one so replay last is going to replay the stroke over where you just put it replay last relative again shift one I can do shift one on my keyboard and then wherever I have my mouse is going to replay that last stroke on the mesh now if I hover over interpolate you're going to see that's the hotkey for that is control shift one so we got one shift one and control shift one so pretty easy to remember so if i want to go replay last i can do that uh, shift one for replay last relative where my brush stroke is and then again if i want to you know interpolate that's just control shift one and that'll go ahead and then use the uh interpolate stroke